What's going on comic fans? It is Mike from the Hardcover Comic here. Today we're going to take a look at a new comic publisher, at least for me, I've never checked out any titles from them. Europe Comics, uh, like I said, a publisher I've never checked out. I read a handful of their new titles and there are five really exciting titles I wanted to mention today. Real quick, before we get into that, let's talk about OrganicPriceBooks.com, the best place to go for your hardcovers. Promo code THC2, you'll get $2 off every single order. With the promo code THC, ship it together, you'll get 5% off your order of three or more books. Honestly, the best place to go if you're looking for hardcovers, trade paperbacks, omnibus, absolute editions, deluxe editions, fantastic. There's so, such a vast selection on organicpricebooks.com, an amazing price point, uh, fantastic customer service, and your books are always going to arrive in pristine condition. Uh, can't recommend them enough. Now, let's get into talking about Europe comics and the titles I've read, why you should check them out, and why you should recommend them to comic fans you know and care about around the world. Let's dive in. If you're new to the channel, I frequently get bored with things like Marvel and DC and I end up looking for something new and different and, and relatively exciting within the world of comic books and this time I've stumbled upon Europe Comics. They're a publisher that takes stories from a few, a handful of countries within Europe, France, Belgium, Poland, uh, namely, those are the ones that I primarily saw in there, but there are also a few more out there, so I apologize if I've missed any. Either way, they take these books, translate them into English, and then release them either physically or digitally. I read all of these digitally. You can either find them on Hoopla or on Comixology if you're interested. Uh, it's I think you can also purchase them on the Europe Comics website directly, um, but I can't confirm that because I haven't done that myself. So just upfront places you can go to check these titles out. The first book I want to talk about is called In Shadows. It's a two book story. Uh, a lot of these books that I'm going to talk about within this video are between like 50 and 80 pages. Some of them even go up to more than that. So a book when it comes to European comics is a lot of content. Uh, Vincent Mali and Hubert are the creative team for this title. It's a, a great story. It was a nice way to get introduced to Europe comics for me. It, it's a fantasy medieval sort of story with uh, primarily focusing on a character named Arzer who runs across a princess named Islin. Now, I don't, I'm not going to spoil too much because it is only two books, but essentially Arzer is tricked into freeing Islin from what seems to be a, a desperate situation surrounded by monsters in a run-down kingdom. What you find out throughout the story is that there's a lot more going on uh, behind, the op the, behind the picture in front of you. Uh, there's a huge history with Islin, with her family. Her, her father is a ruler, uh, not, not like a measuring stick, but like a, the ruler of a territory uh, and, and her mother has her own secrets and her own mysteries and twists and turns uh, with her character. I really enjoyed it. The artwork is fantastic. There are nice little subtle twists and turns, nice little nuances and changes from your sort of stereotypical fairy tale slash fantasy novel. And there's a lot of rich history. What's really cool about all these Europe comics is you're getting a lot of story within a single page. The pages typically are a bit bigger than uh, than a, a Western comic, a, a US comic, I guess I'll say. So you get a bit more content on each page, typically a bit more dialogue too. And within these two issues, you got a really fantastic story that kept me sort of guessing what was going to happen next. And there was always that light, slight little twist or turn that I didn't expect that changed the course of the story uh, from what I had predicted it would be. So I thoroughly enjoyed that. I'm looking forward to more from this creative team. Um, if there's anything you know by them, please let me know. I'll definitely be keeping my eyes peeled. Next up, a title called Noir Burlesque by Enrico Marini, who I personally know from uh, Batman The Dark Prince Charming. This is a fantastic title. It's a grayscale type story with an emphasis on the color red, uh, taking place in the 50s US. So you've got a lot of mafia activity. You've got a lot of that atmosphere and that style, uh, that very cool, almost Ed Brubaker-ish kind of feel to it. Really, really cool stuff. Marini's artwork is stunning. Some of the most beautiful artwork I, I, I've seen in comics. And, it and that's definitely the case with Noir Burlesque as well. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. This title was published from 2021 to 2022 uh, and originally makes its way from France. Dargaud was the original publisher. 
the story focuses on a character named Terry, who is a man that has clearly had a very colored past, who has been through a lot. He was in the war. He's back in the back in civilian life now. He's, you know, used to be a boxer. He's done a lot in his life that's led him to the moment he's in now, where he's run into an old flame caprice. This beautiful, stunning woman who works for a man named Rex, who Terry happens to own, owe money to. Um, so right off the bat, you're getting a nice, you know, almost typical sort of 50s storyline, mafia gangster storyline. Someone owes someone money. The person who owes the money isn't a pushover and doesn't want to just bend over and pay the money willy nilly like that, especially when his ex is involved. Uh, who he left for a war. I mean, so much going on. Really great stuff. If you're a fan of like Godfather, anything by Ed Brubaker, this will be right down your alley. These books are, I think, I think we're closer to about 100 pages each. So you're getting a pretty lengthy storyline, beautiful artwork, fantastic action, a really nice timepiece. Uh, and it's also kind of interesting to take a French creator's perspective and see what they think of uh, America in the 50s. Next up, Aristophania, the Kingdom of Azure. At the, at the time of this recording, there are three books. I think there's a fourth one solicited coming out uh, for this title. So a lot happening with this book. It's written by Xavier Dodson, who typically does longer storylines than just a book or two. Uh, the artwork is by Joel Parnot. I, again, I apologize if I butcher anyone's names. Um, I am I am obviously a Canadian, but I did not take on the French aspect of being Canadian. This is also it was originally published by Dargo in France. In France, uh, really great stuff. I, I I've enjoyed a lot of what Xavier Dodson has done, um, but this title, sorry, Xavier Dorison. I've said Xavier Dodson up until now. Xavier Dorison. My apologies. Terry Dodson, Xavier Dor Dorison. I'm mixing them up. Xavier Dor Dor Dorison. Um, that's my guess on the the French pronunciation. Uh, a great story about a group of kids, really a history, a group of kids that come from a family that has a history of magic. Um, I'm not going to spoil too much. I'm mostly going to talk about like what happens within the first half of book one. But essentially, you learn about this this old woman who is involved in what seems to be some sort of supernatural war uh, within the streets. The story takes place in 1900s. Um, so just sort of industrial revolution era and, and these kids are growing up in a very poor part of France they're not well off at all and they run across this woman um, who knew their father who who decides to help them when their father passes um, by leaving them a dice that they can throw in water to summon her one day there's a need to do that and uh, a bunch of stuff happens again I'm not going to spoil too much but this was such a great great story it was so unexpected um, you've got these three characters uh, these three characters and these kids who are really fun they're really playful characters they all have vastly different um, personalities you've got uh, Basil uh, Calix and Victor so Victor's kind of the studious nerdy one uh, Calix is the, the the female who's more in touch with nature, more t in tune with the supernatural, if you were. Um, and then you've got Basil, who's a very aggressive, very headstrong boy, the oldest of the group, so the protector of the group, um, and very much out seeking revenge against his father and the malicious characters that that murdered his father. And there's clearly a war happening here. These kids get taken to this land of Azur where Aristophania lives. Uh, they start learning about the politics within the world she lives in, the people she's involved with, the people she answers to, and what exactly is happening that their father was roped into and involved in. Uh, a very epic, huge story with just incredibly detailed and beautiful artwork. I mean, if I haven't said it enough already, all the artwork in these titles is jaw-dropping beautiful, but this book in particular really gripped me. Um, so... Really recommend checking out if you're a fan of the supernatural, if you're a fan of fantasy, uh, if you're a fan of things like Lock and Key, Stranger Things, Harry Potter, I'd highly recommend checking out Aristophania, the Kingdom of Azure. Next up, Renaissance. This is a title that has five books out so far, uh, created by Fred Duval and M.M., a fantastic fantastic book now i haven't read all five books just yet i think there's even more coming in the future but i've read the first two and i've really really thoroughly enjoyed it what is happening here is a sort of a twist on humans 
coming to an alien world. Um, in this story, it, you've you've got a handful of human characters that are involved uh, right at the start. You're in, introduced to a world where clearly environmental catastrophes have run amok, uh, while fossil fuels are continuing continuously mined from the earth the earth is on the brink of absolute destruction i mean you've got these two characters that are sort of dealing with the repercussions of it uh helene needing needing to flee with her family and then you've got liz who's actually a firefighter and required to fight the fires happening um really really interesting uh, i guess sort of world to start off with there's a you know a vi an airborne virus in the air something we're all very familiar with and then there's the turn of the story where you suddenly are on an alien planet introduced to a character named Swan after ships show up and invade Earth. Um, and you learn about Swan. You learn about the, the, the individual uh, that Swan is and the incredible things Swan and his, and his people do out in space on their home planet and that they're part of an intergalactic council that wants to save Earth but has deemed that it's on the verge of mass destruction. So you get this really interesting story where Swan and his people, the Foresters, come to Earth as pacifists to save it on a full-scale invasion. And you get to see the sort of consequences of that. So, you know, aliens invading is not a new concept, but the idea of getting their perspective on an invasion where they're trying to be peaceful, seeing humanity disrupt that peace, all the other interesting factors that would come into it, how they interact with Hel uh, Helen and Liz once they do meet up with them. Really interesting stuff. I really like that the artwork is amazing. I don't even know how this kind of artwork can exist, but it does, and it's beautiful. And I'm definitely excited to check out more books from this series. The concept is really cool. You get to see a lot of jumping around between different times, different areas, different planets. Really, really well done. An interesting thought and an interesting concept explored within a, a great, great story. Um, I believe this book was a, 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 originally also published by Dargo in France. Uh, and it's been around since 2019, um, so you've got a, a bit of time, you've got quite a bit to catch up on with Renaissance. The last book I want to talk about is The Dream of Jerusalem, a four-book story by Philippe Thoreau uh, with artwork by Lionel Marty. Uh, this was originally pun uh, published by Dupuy in Belgium. Wow, what a book. What, what a fantastic, fantastic book from 2018. This is a story that takes place in the uh, in the year 1000, 1050, around that time frame, crusade era, medieval times, uh, and it focuses on two characters uh, primarily, Hermans, who is this boy that is born with this ability to to heal people, to, to, to create miracles. Uh, and his mother, Hermance's mother, believes that he may be the second coming of Christ. On the other end of things, you've got Black Liv, who is Carlos of Livonia. The, Livonia was a, a place at the time, and Black Liv was sort of the the head honcho warrior, the baddest of the bad, uh, leading their people in invasions and head hunts. And one day, the, Carlos and his crew stumble upon a, a religious village where the priest opens uh, Carlos's eyes to Jesus and God, if you will. From there, Carlos changes his mind. He is now going to be a crusader fighting for the Lord, and he starts making his way to the tomb of Jesus. Along the way, Carlos and Hermans cross paths and start their adventure together. Very interesting concept. Uh, very, very interesting concept. Obviously not a historical story. While it does take many pieces from the history of the world in this time, there's a lot of supernatural elements in play here, which I really, really enjoyed. The sort of aspect of, of a religious battle. Are they truly fighting for the Lord or is something more sinister at play here? It's the kind of story where you just don't, you just know things aren't going to end well. Uh, around every other page, there may be a danger. There's Tons of tons of stuff happening. You're you're getting years of material within a single book. Uh, years are passing. It's really an epic, epic, vast story uh, with a cool, cool concept. As as most Philip Thoreau uh, books are, they're usually very interesting stories, uh, and I can't recommend it enough. If you like something more historical, it's a very dark book uh, relative to all the other ones. I wouldn't recommend any of the books I've mentioned today to children, but this is by far the most graphic um, and the most intense book conceptually as well. But I really enjoyed it. The artwork was very incredibly detailed and beautiful. The story uh, was 
kind of kept me sinisterly grim the whole time and I kept wanting to read it and finding out how this these religious miracles and this religious aspect of it will continue to change the story from again what I think it may be um, I really enjoyed it all five books that I've mentioned today sort of kept me guessing they all had little slight twists and turns that aren't necessarily always present in the vast volume of stories we get here from American publishers uh, there is usually so many stories they end up overlapping you don't really get anything all that exciting i mean i don't want to say that for the most part but sometimes with these books i was thoroughly surprised it kept kept feeling like a twist something i wasn't expecting maybe my brain works differently from europeans i don't know but either way i know at the end of the day i really enjoyed these five titles have you any have you read anything from europe comics do you have any recommendations for us from publishers from around the world that we we may not be aware of please keep in mind it needs to be translated by i'm definitely open to checking out stories from around the globe thank you all very much for tuning in this is mike from the hardcover comic until next time as always you stay classy internet